Welcome to this short video on children, access to age inappropriate content and mental health, which is the fourth episode in the series. This is a resource for healthcare practitioners and the aim of this session is to educate healthcare practitioners on how a child's digital life can affect their emotional well-being. And as healthcare practitioners, we need to engage with the child's online use so that we can understand how best to support them to manage their own digital lives. My name is Dr. Krisha Patel, and I'm the mental health lead for the company. Exposure to age inappropriate content. So examples of this include pornography and gambling sites, which are 18 rated, exposure to violent behavior, exposure to drug and alcohol misuse, cruelty or abuse to animals and people, or pro self harm content, etc. Some of the content could be illegal, such as child pornography, but of course, many of these things are not illegal. However, the content is unsuitable for children and can be extremely disturbing for the child. Controlling access to age inappropriate content is easier for films, magazines and television. So think pre-internet lads mags. They were placed at the top shelf of the magazine shelf rack and 18 rated films could only be shown and aired at restricted times on the television. It's not as easy to control access to online content. It's very easy to just bypass any of the restrictions on websites um, aimed at adults in terms of pornographic websites or gambling sites. And it's as simple as just ticking a box to say that you are over 18. So access to pornography. The majority of young people think it's far too easy to access pornography online, whether that's accidentally or intentionally. And many people believe that pornography leads to unrealistic attitudes to sex and that pornography can have a damaging impact on young people's views of sex or relationships, influencing self-esteem and behaviour. And I've taken those two from a resource here on young people's views on sex and relationships. And often children will look at pornographic content for education about sexual relationships. And that's at a time when they're starting to explore their own sexual identity and being sexually curious. Of course, access to extreme adult online content has increased exponentially over the last decade. And Parents and school teachers and healthcare practitioners and social workers, we all need to be digitally savvy ourselves if we want to see how we can support children, because there's no easy way to stop a child accessing inappropriate online content if they really want to. Online sexual grooming. What is sexual grooming? And I've got a simplified version of um, explaining what the process of grooming involves. So we start off with an adult who has a sexual interest in children. Then we need children who use the internet. That's very easy. Children use chat rooms, forums, social media sites like Facebook and Instagram. It's never been easier to gain access to children online for those who are that way inclined. Three, the adult finds a vulnerable child to exploit. So this bit is key, finding a vulnerable child. Young people most at risk of harm online are the same as those vulnerable to risk offline. So those risk factors are things like being involved in the care system, having inadequate parental supervision at home, having mental health issues, being a runaway child or missing at school very often that it wouldn't be something that would um, concern a teacher or a parent if they you know went missing for several hours because they are used to that sort of behavior. Someone with very low self-esteem, someone with emotional and behavioral difficulties and someone who seeks affection in risky places. So now the adult has found a vulnerable child to exploit what do they need to do? They need to gain their trust and develop a relationship with that child. So build 
trust, build a relationship. And that could be the adult could pretend to be another child. They could build up a whole fake identity and, you know, tailor it so that um, they have similar interests to the child. So really luring that child in. And they build that relationship and make that child feel loved and secure. Again, it's a child who's seeking affection in risky places who may find may find it online. And then the adult can manipulate the child to send images of a sexual nature or meet them in real life. And this may involve things like giving the child gifts and attention that they don't get at home that they enjoy. So they manipulate the child and um, give them, they could give them gifts and meet them in real life and treat them really well and then ask for these sexual images or ask them to do sexual things. And then to keep that child stuck in that cycle of coming back to their um, groomer, the groomer can manipulate and use blackmail, bribery, coercion, pressure and threaten the child to keep that person hooked in. So they, they can say things like, I've got images of you and if you don't stop sending me images, I'll send them to your friends and family and they'll, they'll be extremely manipulative by having found out the names of their friends and family and their school and things like that. So it's very easy for the child to believe that this will happen unless they carry on doing the things that the groomer wants them to do. So some issues related to ease of access to extreme pornographic content. In the last decade, things seem to be becoming more extreme online in terms of pornographic content. So this has led to certain issues for children and young people and adults as well about changing expectations or skewed views on sexual relationships. Issues about body image, about size and performance anxiety, when there's concern about genital size and sexual performance compared to the performers online and issues about respect, consent and pornography addiction. So online gaming, this is a, also a modern day um, technology related phenomenon and it's usually males, predominantly males, although of course you can have female gamers, it's a predominantly a male dominated thing. And there's been concern around obsessive use and gaming addiction with online gaming that we don't all fully understand the effects of this right now. And multiplayer gaming provides an opportunity for abusive behaviour, including things like cyberbullying and trolling. And potentially there are negative effects on interpersonal communication and social isolation, underage use and excessive use affecting the child's school performance. And briefly to mention pro self harm or pro ana, that means pro anorexia content. So, again, these are also really easy to access online. And there have been calls by MPs for a legal duty of care on social media companies like Instagram and Facebook and YouTube to protect children by taking down any material that would potentially be damaging to children, like pro self harm content. And some of these websites can legitimize the self-harm behavior and they can lead to distorted views on self-harm behaviors and sort of making people, children believe that it's a positive thing and a fashionable thing. And in, it can even go as far as encouraging children to actually engage with self-harm and excessive or obsessive online use and addiction. So we're talking about excessive or obsessive use of things like gaming, pornography, social media and gambling. Many children, so actually it's children and adults, feel that their online use is excessive and some children need help with moderating their online activity and find it difficult to self-regulate their behaviour, especially if they're unsupervised. And what exactly is excessive and obsessive when we live in a time of changing norms when it comes to our online use? So some of the things that may help you decide if this is excessive or obsessive use is if a child is losing track of time and neglecting to do certain activities like eating, sleeping or homework, if they're becoming more withdrawn and they've developed some feelings of anger, aggression, tension or depression, stress, 
if they're building up a tolerance to it, so they're wanting to access more extreme pornographic content or want to spend longer on online gaming over time. And if there are some negative repercussions as well, so negative consequences like arguments at home, lying, isolation, tiredness, particularly tiredness at school and affecting their school performance, for example. Some people are just more vulnerable than others. And as I've already mentioned, they're more vulnerable to grooming and obsessive online use or radicalization and sexting. And that's due to their underlying vulnerabilities and psychological and social risk factors. So there may be a greater negative effect on these children who are more vulnerable. And I've already mentioned this vicious cycle that can develop. So thank you for listening to this webinar and please check out the other training resources on my channel. And just as a final comment, of course, there are many positive aspects to online access and the digital generation. However, there are also these negative aspects and there are many concerns about people's digital lives and how it's affecting the emotional well-being of the child and the emotional development of the child. So particularly with children and young people who are more vulnerable to some of these risks that we need to be aware of.